Are we live? We're alive. We need a sound check. How are we doing, everybody? We need to get some people on here. Most of Master Spas, lots of Master Spas folks are actually in Hawaii as we speak. We're jealous. We're jealous. Hop on, let us know where you're watching from and definitely want to, Donna, what's up? Definitely want to, uh, if someone could give us a sound check. We're not getting in today because we're talking about hardcore chemicals. Sound is good. Thank you, James. All right. We'll give everyone a few minutes. We got 18 people. We got lots of questions. Yeah. Chemicals are just, they freak people out. Yeah. Can hear you in Washington. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Scott. Thank you. Very good. Ohio. Where else do we have? Knoxville. It's funny. We're like just far enough away where I'm like. I know. I can't. You're, I can't see that far without my glasses. So. All right, all right. St. Louis, sound is good. We have a special guest. We do. Um, I need to show I, you guys. It's just unbelievable. We have a, a <laughs> new friend, a new special guest, a new family member here. And he likes me. He really likes me. <laughs> Say hi. How's that? I kind of think he just likes the fur on my slippers, but that's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Purebred German Shepherd. His name is Captain. Captain Gilliam. <laughs> Look at that animal. He's a very, very good boy. Good even, boy. even the first night, uh, he was pretty good. Really? Beth, will, Beth will agree with that. He's just really calm, really chill. All right. Okay. How do you want to start? So we we get a lot of questions about chemicals. Master Spas directly gets a lot of questions about chemicals and maintaining your swim spa or your hot tub. Basically, it's the same, just a little bit more in the swim spa. Yeah. So we thought it might be a good idea to circle back around to swim spa maintenance 101 or swim spa chemicals 101 and just kind of go over what we do, mostly what Ben does really, but what we do to take care of um, the swim spa here in the warehouse and, and Ben takes care of the one at his house. So um, we will talk about his special Ben method <laughs> just because it's easy it and easy. it really, you know, and it really does a, a great job. We, you know, that's what what we do here at the warehouse and we've had it now here for three years i think i can't keep, more than i that. can't keep my eyes off the puppy i cannot tell a <laughs> lie uh it's he's so freaking good he's a, he is a really good boy so he's sound asleep on mary's foot <laughs> um so we we decided that it would be a good idea to kind of circle back to this yep you know even if we've done it a few times yep. so yep. um and we do have a few questions that we'll get to also. And if you have any while you, while we're on here, you can come. So on the, on the ask them here. Sorry. And definitely fire fire away. And and there's a couple of things that I want. First thing I thought that comes to my my mind is on the Master Spot Owners Group on Facebook, uh, which you know Mike Lehe is just a god. Amazing. He's you know you guys. He is patient. I know some, sometimes he doesn't know he's feel like he's patient he is he patient is. I mean the amount of comments the amount of messages Wow uh, he is just as good as people get all the administrators and the help on there that he's got now Angie I mean everybody is just awesome so you know every every day I sit there and I appreciate what they're doing for all of us mm, um, yeah just not only master spots for, for all of our customers for dealers I mean they are really just knocking this thing out but one of the things we just continue to see, and it doesn't matter how many times he says, the posts are pinned to the top, I can't find <laughs> it, I, I don't know. You know, it's always chemicals, and people just lose their minds. Um, I don't, there was a post last week, and, and uh, the poor woman was just like freaking out about uh, initial startup, and you know, am I, and then she actually asked, am I overthinking it? And everyone just said, yeah, just put the temperature on, close the cover, walk away for a little while. You know, it, it's, it's not that difficult, but people really lose their mind over it. 
and it's it's once you get the hang of it, you'll never look back. Because in, in for you new folks who are who are just you know wetting down your your swim spa, your hot tub for the first time, you know you you post a question in there, and then someone who's been doing this for man, it seems like they've been doing it for 20 years. They've been doing it for seven months, and they're talking like you know they invented chlorine, <laughs> and the, and it's that easy. I mean, once you get the hang of it you'll be like, ah, oh, this is nothing, don't worry about it, just like we are. So we don't mean to, you know, if, if you feel insulted when we kind of, you know, poke at you, we're not. We, there was a day when all of us knew nothing, sure. okay? Yeah. And that was just lessons learned. It's, call it friendly hazing, okay? So, you know, and, and what, I, what I do for me, it works for me. And the other thing is, is that's important to note, and this is something we don't really talk about all yeah. the time, different parts of the country have different water concerns. Right. You know, and, and actually Angie posted about this and I, I was reading and I'm going, you know what, she's right. And this is something that we need to talk about even more. So just because something works for us here doesn't mean that it will work for you exactly the same where you are. You mm -hmm. have different mineral content, different yeah. calcium hardness, you know, natural uh, pH and all these different things. So, you know, it, you got to take it all with a grain of salt. So it's really just a matter of knowing what you're doing with your specific water. And that's why a specific question on here will help. Um, this dog is still in the same spot. He hasn't moved. He's eight weeks old, eight and a half weeks old. So he doesn't, he doesn't give much of a damn about water chemistry. He's just taking a nap. So, but, it, but it's pretty easy. So, you know, what I do for, or do you want to talk? Let's, let's talk about, how do you want to start this? Where do you want to start? Let's, let's do initial fill up. Yeah. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'll do it. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not super great. She doesn't about do the, the initial, initial fill up, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I think, you know. Although you've been next to me and oh, done it yeah, so many times, yeah. you probably could if, if you were, yeah. you know, if you. If well, you and had, I think this is, this is another example of talking about initial fill up. You know, we, we work with a lot of different people in, in a lot of different places, different places. And um, what I think what I think is best to impart here is just what will work anywhere, anywhere so for the like initial a, a, gen a generic take. Right, right. Okay, so in, but in one thing that I want to stress before you start really quickly though is that you don't need a pre-filter. Isn't am I right? If you're on city water, right. So if if you're on city water, yeah, actually that's a good. I mean, some people will say run it anyway. You, you got all these different opinions out there. Um, personally, I don't, I, I'm, this, this, my house, water comes in a truck. I don't run a pre-filter on that. It's, it's coming through a truck. Mm -hmm. And then here, I don't run a pre-filter. It's city water, it's water's perfect. Yeah. On a well, I would run a, a pre-filter, um, but I probably wouldn't, well, I definitely wouldn't fill a swim spot off of a well. And not because of the water quality, but because I don't want to put, you know, a trainer 15 deep is 1900 gallons. I don't want, and that's the most common swim spa on the entire planet. So figure it's going to be close to about how many gallons you need, give or take a hundred. It's still a tremendous amount of, of water. So I'm mean, not compared to a pool, but you wouldn't fill a pool off a well, obviously. So it's, that's just putting a lot of strain on your well and well pump. And, and we don't recommend that. So I would always have you, you know, I'd always recommend even on a hot tub, four, four or five hundred gallons all at one shot on a well pump, especially if it's not a huge one or a great well that's super deep, you know, you may want to uh, consider bringing that, that truck water mm -hmm. in and it's typically pretty perfect. So that's that's one thing you can do. But let's start from scratch on an initial yeah. fill up. And, and an initial fill is, is the same as uh, a refill. You know, it's the same process because right. it's new water. It doesn't, your, your spot doesn't give a, da a damn what, whether it's, you know, already been filled once before or not. But I will say this, um, a trainer 15D is 1,895 gallons. Uh, Tim, so I'm, and we're, we're squinting to see the little questions on the bottom. We'll go back and get in there. Uh, one, and I did see a question about um, if, if it's winterized, which I don't really like to do. I wouldn't winterize, I, I would run it through the winter. Uh, here, there are colder climates that maybe you, you just say, I'm not going out there, but I, I still don't do it. Um, it is, it is, can cause problems in and itself. Okay, so winterizing can be tricky. But if you have the antifreeze in there, what is it, non-chlorine shock to get rid of it, right? I actually don't know. I think it is, we, we okay. read that. So I've actually never done it personally, but I'm almost positive you just, you shock it. So fill it and shock it and oh, it'll, I, it'll yeah. get rid of that because it should be the right type of, 
of antifreeze, antifreeze for the swim spot. Right, for, for the, the swim spot. Topic. So uh, you just shock it and that gets rid of it. I'm, I'm, I'm nearly positive. Um, we can check on that though. Okay, so you still sound asleep. So you fill the tub, all right? Tub is filled, swim spa, hot tub doesn't make any difference. And this is, this is what I tell people to do. Um, I'm sure that Kirk is gonna, well maybe he's, is Kirk in Hawaii? Kirk's probably in Hawaii. I think so. I don't know if Kirk is in Hawaii, but he'll pop on and he's, he's watching. Big Brother's watching. So fill the tub up and then for a hot tub, I would use half of a bottle of a sequestering agent, okay? So that is metal out, metal gone. There's, there's probably a dozen of them, maybe, maybe more. Put a half a bottle in for a hot tub and I use a full bottle for the swim spa. Um, on city water here, I don't do it, okay? Um, you can, I have lots of people who still do it. He's so cute. Lots he of people who- He fell off who's, my shoe <laughs> so while long, he was sleeping. While he readjusted, all right. So we weren't sure if the dog was just gonna lose his mind and go yipping around in here. He's eight weeks old, and God only knows what he's gonna do, but he's just chilling out by our feet. So, okay, so you filled up the tub. Let's say it's a swim spa, a whole bottle of sequestering agent. And then what you wanna do is over the next day or two, you wanna clean those filters out. And what that's, the sequestering agent is gonna grab onto any minerals. Uh, we're looking for copper, we're looking for iron, excess amounts. It's gonna grab onto it, go, you know, grab onto it and then travel into the filter. So when you spray the filter out with the hose, you're gonna get rid of those minerals. And depending on where you live, it can be, you'll see the, the, the people kind of lose their mind when the filter isn't perfectly clear white. Um, you're going to see color in there. If there's tons of copper, it's gonna look green, a green tint. If there's a ton of iron, it's gonna look red or brown. Okay, so that's totally normal. Spray it out and it might stain it a little bit and that's okay. You can, you can soak them in a filter degreaser at some point, a filter cleaner and get that stuff off of there if you really care. Um, I would just spray it out. So ours don't typically look that way because we're not, you know, it's city water and trucked in water. So that's not something that we really deal with. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna take a look at the calcium, okay? So your calcium should be, what is it, 150 to 250 uh, ppm. And the calcium is important because if your calcium is way off, it can actually cause cloudiness, okay? And this is something we don't really talk about it, probably enough, um, but it's something you wanna check, okay? You wanna make sure your, your calcium hardness is in the right zone, which is, is 150 to 250, 250 being on the high side. And then, then from there, you're gonna start with, if you would look at your test strip, actually, you know what I wanna do today? So obviously, we do the Ben method, and I don't measure anything. I haven't put anything in there other than chlorine. So we'll go test ours. I didn't even think we had any test strips. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, they're out there. They're out there. So we're, we're pretty sure we've got test strips. We'll test it and see where the Ben method landed us. We've done this before um, and it's always sort of interesting. I know that the water is clear because I, I peeked at it today and the water is spotlessly clear. So I imagine we're, we're pretty tight in the middle there of all the zones. So you want to hit it, let's say, you, you took a test strip in there, which I wouldn't even do because I know my water. But if you wanted to, you'd check it. And then what you want to do, let's say your water was just all out of whack. Our water comes out of the tap here or the truck and the pH and alkalinity are pretty damn close. So we're lucky. Uh, not every place is like that. And this is where some of the frustration lies on the, on the Facebook group is that some people say, I, I filled it up and I took the test strip and it's all over the place. So, you know, here's Ben, oh, the Ben method is so easy. He thinks that everything is so easy. His water comes out of there looking like gold and mine looks like garbage. So let's start from scratch. Calcium hardness, and then we want to address A before P, alkalinity, pH, total chlorine, all right? So that's all there is to it. The calcium hardness really isn't gonna to change too much once you have it dialed in, and then you wanna go after the alkalinity, okay? Then you're gonna go after the pH if you Go out, if you go out of order, you're gonna affect the other one. And then you wanna use chlorine last, okay? So A, P, C. That's how you check it and that's how you do it. And then it'll, once you start to understand that and it's easy to remember that, let's say, let's, let's pause on the initial fill up and go to, I opened up my swim spa, the water was cloudy. Oh my God, what do I do? Take a test strip, okay? I realize that we really don't use them, but if my water gets cloudy, I do use them then. It just doesn't happen right. very often, okay? So if, if the water gets cloudy, let's say we went away for two weeks, 
we're traveling here or there and we went away for two weeks, I would use a test strip if that water was cloudy because I need to see what's going on and what needs to be addressed. Although I'm pretty sure we don't even have any alkalinity or pH up. I don't think we do. We might. We might. So I would take the test strip, put it in, and it's, it's going to be low. Typically your, your alkalinity and pH are going to be low and then you can put in alkalinity up, which, which often will raise, well, not often, pretty much all the time, will raise your pH at the same time, okay? If it's high and you put pH down in there, is it, you're, gonna, you're gonna lower both as well, all right? And then you can bring up individually, you know, pH if you need to, you can try that either way, but it'll, it'll balance out. So down or up, depending on where you are, get that fixed, then hit it with chlorine. And you're gonna to need to, to whack it with the chlorine, but if, you're, if your alkalinity and your pH and your calcium aren't correct, the calcium, or the, I'm sorry, the chlorine is not going to do its job. Okay, we're not even at the point talking about non-chlorine shock yet. We're only talking about alkalinity, pH, and chlorine. Make sense? Mm -hmm. A, P, C, chlorine. Now, so if you're just this is another thing that, this is how I typically catch it. If it's been a few days and we're away or something was going on, I didn't look at it. And I always tend to see the cloudiness starting on the very bottom of the tub. If I see that, I'll crush it with chlorine right then and there. I don't yeah. test strip it, I just crush it. You know, a good couple of ounces of chlorine, three ounces of chlorine in a swim spa, and then turn the filters on high. Um, we have, this swim spot does not, I'm trying to remember which one has yeah. Master Pure. Uh, this tub right here does not have Master Pure, but the one at home does. So what that means, it doesn't really change anything at all. All that it changes is that at home, I don't need to alter the um, filtration. filtration cycle because it's always on. That circ pump is always running, so it's set at 24 hours all the time. Whereas on this one, we can have it down at, at eight hours, normally and then if something happened we can crank it all the way up to 24 so here that would be the difference and I would crank it up at that point all right so if you see a little bit of cloudiness on the bottom hit it with chlorine crush it now that's what I do all right so let's talk about non chlorine shock there's always the question I don't know whether I'm supposed to use non chlorine shock or I'm supposed to use chlorine which is right well there's two can we say one thing before you can the, say anything chlorine, you want. the non chlorine shock so when we're talking about chlorine for a hot tub or a swim spa, we're talking about dichlor. <laughs> so not <laughs> not pool, not, not in a floater. Oh right, my God, Mike, not Mike, Mike Leahy's head spinning. Or or uh, pool chlorine is typically trichlor, uh, or or some people use liquid chlorine. Not in your swim spa or hot tub. You want to make sure that She's it's right. dichlor, which is a lower concentrate of chlorine. Yep. Um, and that's what that's what is safe. What for happens? The if, hot what happens if they do time. use trichlor? Bad things. What happens to your warranty? Oh, you possibly. Yeah, you could void your warranty. You could ruin the the acrylic um, yep. shell. You could ruin your fittings. And now I'm, I'm, it's not. That was actually a, it's a great thought. Thank you. This is from Mike Lehe. They don't make pucks out of dichlor. Dichlor. Yeah. So if it's a puck. Even if it was a master spot dealer who gave it to you, if it says trichlor, don't use it. No go. Okay. And then mostly it's also to you know to, to have you be using a lower concentrate of chlorine on your sure. skin, gentle, on, you gentle, know, on your more, bathing more suits. It's it's much safer for for us as people um, in in the smaller body of water. So. Okay. So, so non chlorine shot. Now what Mike Lehe. Oh. You see this animal. Mike Lehe does not use the Ben method. Okay. He, he uses a more traditional you know, way, which what I do is I just put in a small amount of chlorine dichlor every time I get out and I rarely shock it. Although I do like the idea of shock, I'm in a hurry and I'm taking care of two and I don't care and I'm a jerk. So that's what works for me, okay? And I've always done that. But there are other ways. Some people will, will use a larger amount of chlorine once a week and use non-chlorine shock after each use. That's not wrong, okay? It's a matter of which you were instructed to do, which you're most comfortable with. I find my method to be easier because I don't really need too much other stuff other than dichlor in which we get, you can see it. Look, that's where we keep it. Yep. 
you can see right above my finger, that's a four pound bucket of dichlor. That's where we keep it. That's all, the, that is literally the only chemical over there. All and right. we just have a scoop. It, it wasn't in the bucket. It's out, of a, um, it's out of a tub of protein. Yeah, we used like a protein powder scoop and that was about one ounce of powder. So we, we, we kind measure of measured that, we measure that, that out before, uh, before we, just to, so that we could tell someone how much chlorine. And most days we oh, just put I'm in one you. I'm gonna interrupt of, you right there. So uh, Zandra, if I heavily shock, the total chlorine gets too high. If you use a non-chlorine shock and you hit it hard, your total chlorine is going to go up temporarily it's going to remove all the garbage and then it's going to settle back down so you can just keep the jets on leave the cover open and it will burn off that's on purpose so it, it's sort of think of it this way the non-chlorine shock is releasing the chlorine that's in the water and getting stripping the junk out of it so that the chlorine can do a better job mm -hmm. okay so what what i how i sort of remember it is this if i had a giant bucket of non-chlorine shock right next to that one which we could easily get one of these days probably will probably won't but if this, we did if it magically showed up and it was sitting next to that bucket of course then it's gonna take too much of the stairs and then I'll get rid of it but anyway let's say it was there then what I would do is once a week I would using the Ben method I like the dichlor each time I would hit it with that non chlorine shock and what it does is sort of refreshes the water it refreshes the chlorine so that it can do its job all right and which is the same thing that Xander was saying it goes really high the chlorine goes really high mm -hmm. when she uses the shock it's on purpose it's supposed to and then it's going to settle back down that's very very normal okay and those are the differences in the two methods what you can't do is mix both methods then you'll be a mess okay yeah. you can't miss now and and i want to i i see this stuff all the time my first hot tub god what year was it i'm getting old um the first hot tub the first big boy hot tub we ever had was 2003 or 4 okay and you know, I, I just, I always did it this way, so that's what we did, and then it just really, really worked out well. Um, I sort of forgot where I was going. I couldn't remember how oh. long it had been. <laughs> anyway, so that's the way that we do it with the, the, the shock, the non-chlorine shock. I've never really done it that way. That's the way that it works for me. What you don't wanna do is use two methods. That's when you'll get all messed up, yep. okay? So pick a method go with it you know your water everybody's water is a little different so just kind of use those guidelines so put the water in sequestering agent half a bottle for hot tub full bottle for a swim spa after a day wash the filters out and you you can wash the filters out over the next couple of days then you're going to want to check the calcium then we go a alkalinity p c chlorine and then you're good to go and then if you're refilling same process if you open up you already have water and there's a ton of cloudiness now you also have this option that, that sometimes mike will say on facebook hey dump it water's cheap right dump it and refill it if it's really freaking you out dump it and refill it yeah. that's okay i mean i have the water trucked in at the house i pay a buck fifty buck seventy five or something for the water which for that many gallons delivered and the tub gets filled yeah. up in two minutes it's sort of sort of a good deal i think i mean we uh I did mean to change the water before winter, but I didn't. So we're going to go a year yeah. with that water. And it's perfect. So. One, one question that we get a lot is what brand do I need to use? Um, you, you do, typically you would get a startup chemical kit when you buy your hot tub or swim spot with, with a brand. Maybe it's Rendezvous or I don't know. Protein. Protein. I like protein. Um, you don't have to rebuy that same brand. However, if you do, you know you're buying the right stuff. When you buy it elsewhere, either online or from a pool and spa store, you really just want to make sure that you're getting spa safe chemicals. Sure, so you don't right. want to be Specific. getting pool chemicals. And I, I don't have a hot tub at my house, but Ben has, and he has found that even buying like really inexpensive stuff, like from Walmart oh, or happened. sometimes like even on Amazon, it's not the highest quality I'll, and it I'll could be bad. I will tell you this, if this hadn't happened to me and someone came to me and said it, I would not have believed them. Mm -hmm. I had a bad batch of chlorine from Walmart 
I won't say the brand begins with a H, ends with an H. There's something in the middle that I can't remember. How's that? I have no idea. What you're she doesn't about. even know it. Everyone else is like, oh, I know that brand. So anyway, it was a bad batch. Uh, it, but we had used it before and I was sitting there not understanding why is my water getting cloudy? Why is my water getting cloudy? I know what I'm doing. Water was cloudy and then we went to a regular you know, hot tub store. I was nowhere near work. Um, couldn't grab one. So uh, you know, got, got a real bottle of it and all of a sudden one day better. And it was just a bad batch. There was like no active ingredient. It smelled right. like chlorine but I don't know why. But that happened, and the water was three weeks old, so it wasn't anything like that. It just happens. Yeah. Okay? So get the stuff from a reputable store, Yeah. and you'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. It doesn't matter what brand. It's not that critical, and, and don't worry about it too much. You're going to make mistakes. The first you know, couple of months are going to be, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? You're fine. You're fine. Okay? And um, what else? Do we want to go just check the questions on here sure. and then do the questions that you came your, in? Yeah, I do yeah. have my phone. Yeah. We're going to read them off the phone since we're sitting here. Okay. Oh, well, we got to do the test trip. What time is it? Oh, we're good on time. All right. I'm gonna... And then we got to grab that and like, you got to use your fingers and see if we got, yeah. we've got questions. I can, on. I can we'll be back on here. tonight later on too if there's specific questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching us on our phones. That's weird. That's weird. Are you looking for questions on there? I thought the yeah. emailed questions. Well, you want to do those first? And you know what? We need more pictures of installs, guys. Many more. Yes. So it's, uh, you can, yes, we'll just quickly do a little commercial here. So we want to see your install pictures for the Facebook contest for us to do a Facebook Live at your house. Yes. We need to see lots of pictures of all different seasons of your hot tub or swim spa. And you're going to submit it, and I know Kayla will put a post up, but it is masterspas.com backslash FB contest. You remember that? Yes. So just make sure that you're doing sending it to that website um, so that we can compile all of those, and then they can choose a winner. And I'm pretty sure that you have until March 31st to submit those, and the winner will be chosen by April 15th, so. I can't believe you remember like the backslash, forward slash. She remembers all that stuff. I've so already forgotten what you like said. That. Okay. Okay. First question from Jim in Iowa, I think is IA. It's Iowa. Should I add sanitizer on days that I don't use my trainer? I'm trying to follow your Ben method. Thanks. So I, I uh, maybe, how's that? So for me, if I hadn't been in a few days, I would take a look at it. And if the water looked good, or, or if you really want to, you can throw a test strip in there and see where it's at. And then you can, you know, pop it in there, um, pop in a little bit. If you're not sure, yeah, just put in half a scoop, yeah. you know, and, and that's it. So I, I do do that all the time, even on days that we don't use it, um, because it takes one second. Um, oh, you know what? I remember what I was going to say before. I'm going to back, pause there. Yeah. Pause on the questions there. On the Facebook, we always see all of these crazy, you know, use this and flush out the lines and use oh. this and do this and scuzz all and scuzz removal. Guys, none of our dealers really use or recommend any of that stuff. I've never used it once in any of the, any of the hot tub or uh, swim spots that we've had. I've never touched it, never had a problem doesn't change the water chemistry. You know, it's, there's nothing in the lines that's making your water cloudy. It's typically just not enough chlorine. Water chemistry, yeah. Okay, yeah. And so all that stuff, of course they're gonna be, you know, great at selling it, that's what they do. And, and you know what, if you wanna use it and you just, that makes you more comfortable to, to you know, descale things, but you, you know, we don't ever do that stuff. We don't fully really recommend it. It's not something that we think you need. Um, don't get too crazy about it, okay? I, I don't believe that it makes water chemistry any different. There's n really no way for it to, all right? pH is pH, alkalinity is alkalinity. You know, we're talking about acidic levels and chlorine is a sanitizer. That's pretty basic. It doesn't really need anything else, okay? So I'm not bashing anybody, but it's not something that we've ever bothered to use because this is pretty easy and, and don't really feel that's necessary. Um, and then I saw, I did see a question pop up there. What about Leslie's pool supply? Uh, I'm sure it's fine. 
you know, and yeah. just get brands that are specific to spas. I mean, I'm, I'm I, I've heard of people going to pinch a penny and finding, you know, spa safe chlorine yeah, and being fine. And I'm sure it. it's fine. I, I would, I guess I'd probably stay away from, you know, your, your big box stores who are buying, right. you know, but a smaller place like that, and although Leslie's is a pretty big operation, um, I'm sure it's fine. You know, we'd like to see you support your dealers, ideally, you know, right, right. If, you've, if you've got one that's that's local. And, you and listen, them. you if you try something, it's not working, then go back to what yeah. you know works. But don't, don't think that just because it's chlorine in the bottle and right. it's dichlor that it's necessarily working. Because <laughs> yeah. I learned that lesson the hard way. And I, I, again, if it hadn't happened to me, I would have not believed that it was possible. How, how difficult is it to make proper chlorine? Apparently it's difficult. The, and I know, I know Ben looked this up because neither of us have ever heard of this, but this question is from Mel in Arizona. Is Mel. it okay to add blue clear in the swim spa water to help keep the water clear? So um, I looked up blue clear, blue clear really quickly. Uh, it looks to just be a clarifier. Okay. That's what it, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're talking about the right product. There's lots of clarifiers out there. Clarifier um, is a Band-Aid. Yeah. It, it is. And, and it doesn't right. fix you, you your really, water You chemistry. really don't want that unless you really have to. I don't use it. I don't mm -hmm. have any. I would never buy any. Um, it's not something that's necessary if you're doing the chemicals right. Um, most of the time, um, it's probably not a great idea, and it's going to need to be addressed, whatever's really wrong. Right. Um, anyway, so yeah. I, I don't really recommend that and it's gonna definitely you have to gum up the filters You want to really clean that junk out of your filters because it gets yucky. Okay, so um, I just I can see a question on there is dichlor liquid or powder uh, powder mm -hmm. So I, I recommend powder. Yeah, don't use liquid. I have heard of one Story, I don't know what kind of chlorine it was it could be liquid trichlor for all I know I have no idea years ago. I heard a story about someone accidentally dumping they got it from work they worked in some kind of manufacturing and they had a five gallon bucket of chlorine liquid and they accidentally dumped it in there and it wrecked yeah. the acrylic. I, I mean, instantly that, yeah. wrecked the acrylic. I don't remember where the story was. It was years ago, but uh, with powder, kind of, kind of tough to go wrong. Just use the right stuff. You know, we get uh, lots of questions in, on alternate things all the time. And yeah, it's your spa. You can do whatever you want, but if you have a problem, it's on you. Okay, so mm -hmm. I personally, I wouldn't bother. You know, Actually, just... that answers this next question from Mick it? in New York. Since the only ingredient in pH and alkaline up is 100% sodium bicarbonate, can we use bicarbonate? Can we use Bacon, Arm yeah. & Hammer baking soda, baking which soda. is also 100% sodium bicarbonate? Again, back to that. You can do anything you want. If there's a problem, it's on you. It's not a spa product. I understand it's the right. same chemical. Our position is this. Um, you're asking a specific question for one person. Well, we're giving advice to many people. Many people, yeah. And the thing is, is that uh, this gentleman might be aware that what he has is the pure Arm & Hammer baking soda and no deodorizer or something else, but someone else may not look at the box carefully, which happens every single day. People, some pay attention, some pay a little less attention, and it's got a deodorizer in it or some other mm -hmm. different thing in there that's not supposed to be in your water. And interestingly enough, I just was reading something, and this has to do with baking, but baking powder and baking soda are really only active for like six months, and then they don't actually, like their activating ingredients or whatever are have expired, and you don't realize that, but it could affect your what cooking. Is it? so, it's soda which ash? I can't, soda ash, right? It's, I don't know, yeah, but I would ash. think that if, it, if that happens in your baking, you know, it probably wouldn't clean the water as well. So you're probably right. stuck there too. So, so, so the blanket answer is this, use spa products for spas. If you have a, if you work at Arm & Hammer and you want to use that and you know it's the pure stuff, hey, do you do you. We're <laughs> never going to give you permission to use something else right. from our seat. We have to give, you know, the, official the, the fine print version. boilerplate. We have yeah. to give the fine print. So I, I feel like we've asked, been asked that question quite a few times. Um, the answer is, you can take care of your business. Our official answer is to use spa products for spas. I understand it's the same chemical. We'll, um, leave, we'll leave it there. This question is from Brad in North Carolina. What is the highest temp you can set the swim spa to? So I'm gonna tell you that yes, you can set it to 104, and Ben's gonna tell you how, if it only goes to 99, because <laughs> I always mess this up. Okay, so now I'm telling, okay. Yeah. So, uh, 
I say this properly. <clears throat> it comes set uh, as a result of California efficiency compliance in lower heat range to go to 99. And if your if your temperature gauge is stopping at 99, at 99 then yours you obviously have that. If you have a couple of year old swim spots, it's going to go to 104 just like they always did. Mm -hmm. So if you power down, breaker off, breaker off, power down, breaker off, <laughs> off, breaker off. I think we got that clear, yep. right? Breaker off. Breaker. So you turned your breaker off, <laughs> then you have a little tiny dip switch bank inside your your spa pack it, the big gray Box. thing that says vp it's balboa okay you're gonna open that up and there's a little map it's just like the chocolates yes yep you get a box of chocolates and there's a little map some brands don't have the map but some do ours does is it gonna be like that is it the same pack in the new in the new uh with the new gecko i don't know oh okay that you're the first one to ask that so we we use Balboa spa packs and we also use Gecko. You totally spa packs. You totally shanghaied the answer. So do Sorry. you want me to give the answer? Uh, I'm then, assuming then, it's then the same. Then mind your business over there for a second. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that. You Actually, just I'm, said that kind, and I was wondering some people I'm, are going to be getting the well, other the kind. Well, the brandy spanking new ones, but the majority of these people are going to have the Balboa. So okay. So there's a little tiny, and the switches they are tiny. You may not even see them. You may not notice them. You need the tiniest little, you know like a Phillips head screwdriver for the screws on eyeglasses and, and you've got the map yep. and it tells you which one is high and you flip it up after the power's turned off. Yes. If you, you open up that box with the power on, you are in danger. Please don't do it. If you're not comfortable with it, have a tech do it. It's not difficult. And then what will happen is when you power back up because you powered off, most importantly, then what would happen is your, your control panel would all of a sudden magically go to 104. Okay, the, yep. the brainy spanking new panels, uh, panels that are coming out right now, that's a good question. We'll have to answer that one uh, next time. I don't know that answer. I've only seen one of them in person. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Next question is from Derek in California. I Derek. have an H2X 15 deep. How much dichlor should I be using weekly? I seem to have a hard time getting the chlorine levels up. So I'm, I'm not being a, j a jerk. More. <laughs> uh, so it, it, it's, it's impossible for me to answer that question, all, all joking aside, because I don't know your, your bather load. And even if you did, I don't measure mine, so I couldn't answer that without trying to figure out where you're at right now. But all I would do is just use a, if you're using a scoop, use another half a scoop each time and then and check it. But don't forget, guys, your EcoPure is going to bring that down. So you want right. to hit it afterwards and get it to lock in there. And your EcoPure's job is going to lower it, okay? So don't get too crazy. If your water's really perfect and clear, and then every time you get in, you measure it with a test strip, and it's at zero, well, then you need to bring it up a little bit, but not too much, because you're really you're balancing. You're you're walking a wire, okay? So just use a little bit more, and go from there. Unfortunately, with that information, all I can say is a little more than you are. So use a heavier scoop. And you may want to think about it as more of like a daily dichlor rather than weekly like right. you if you're using right. it every day you might want to put in like a half a scoop to a scoop or or half an ounce to an ounce of the dichlor each day that you're using right. it right use so. it more more frequently yeah. you know we we sort of teach it as the blood sugar method where you don't want this with your chlorine level so each time you put in a small amount that is the Ben method okay and then Terry in South Dakota asks, do you have Terry. a preference over chlorine or bromine for clearer water? I like good old fashioned chlorine. Yeah. I don't have any issues with it. Um, I, I think bromine smells funny. I and it, it's I actually harsher. I don't mean to upset Mr. Bromine. Yeah. Uh, I just don't like it. It reminds me of mothballs. It smells funny to mm -hmm. me. I don't, I'm not a fan. Um, I, I know that it's more expensive and I just kind of believe that it's completely unnecessary. Um, I don't bromine, think it's you mean. yeah I do yeah. I don't think it's necessary yeah. so that's my preference doesn't mean if you love bromine and you you if your water is spotless and clear and you like bromine mm -hmm. and you don't care yeah. about the the price difference man knock yourself out it's great there's nothing wrong with it all right but I, uh, I was just gonna say our our water in here and Ben's water at his house is is perfectly clean and clear 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 tell and, tell and he about the uses eco -pure. the dichlor tell him about the eco pure and bromine bromine takes longer to, oh, I can't think of the word it, right make now. Make it easier, they don't like each other. 
Okay, so the Ego Pure is meant to dissipate excess chlorine. That's its job. And it doesn't do that as well with the bromine. It takes, it takes a lot longer and it just doesn't work as well. So if you use bromine, you might need to take out your Ego Pure filter and just use the regular You need to take filters. it out. You need to take it out. They don't like each other at all. You didn't, you've made that too complicated. Sorry. They don't like each other. So if you're using bromine, get rid of the Ego Pure. Just use standard regular filter. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is this is this def this question is definitely from you. From for me. It from? is from Darius. I hope I said that name Darius? correctly. In Poland. Darius. Darius. We hope, we hope that you're listening. I think we're close. My TC and FC. Total chlorine, free chlorine. I'm assuming. Yep. Are still near zero after running my Challenger 15 for about three months. Is it okay if pH is about 7.4 and alkalinity is between 120 to 180? That's too high. Which is too high? Uh, alkalinity. Okay, how's the pH? That's okay. So pH so I think is that's okay, right in the middle. Seven, but six, the alkalinity seven, two, seven, is too high, so you may Al need yeah, alkalinity Yeah, 120 is about down. the top of the alkalinity, so you wanna use some down, some spot down and get that down for sure. Um, I would ask if, after running it for three months, I'm assuming you've, you've put in chlorine more than once. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. that your water would look like a swamp. Um, so I would, I would ask if your water's clean and clear, if it's perfectly clean and clear, I would bring that alkalinity down a little bit and uh, you know, get some spa down in there. You know, Cause you can go down to seven two on the pH. So if you, if you use spa down or pH down or whatever, whichever one is gonna bring both down a little bit, bring them down a little bit. And then you may find that you get more out of your chlorine when those are more in line where they're supposed to be your your chlorine levels will will fix a little bit okay but I, I would just ask if your if your water was clean and clear and kind of go from there and then he said his cyanuric yep. acid, acid is about 60 and the total hardness level is 250. um that's okay they're they're okay the uh the, the hardness level the calcium hardness 250 is about the ceiling so watch that it's just creeping up there a little bit uh you don't want it too too high either Okay. But yeah, your numbers, your numbers aren't, aren't terrible. Uh, the 120 to 180, the 180 on the alkalinity is definitely too high. So get those down a little bit, but I'm sure if your water looks good, you're close. So, uh, you know, and, and then if you're getting specific numbers, you might be using like a real test kit. We just use the, the strips, uh, oh, yeah. which we need to do. I want to show you guys that how we yeah. do uh, 440. You want to actually, you want to use your phone and sure. kind of, yep. Okay. So we'll, we'll go through any questions and then. We'll I don't want to move water. right now. I, my new friend here is liking me, so I don't know. <laughs> He's we such a good boy. We did our first shock this morning. Our total chlorine was high, but everything else was perfect. Do we wait for the morning and retest and add Spa Plus again if needed? You gotta turn the sound down. It's so confusing. I can't do that. It's crazy. All right, so turn the sound down. Ask that one more time. We did our first shock this morning. Our total chlorine was high, but everything else was perfect. Do we wait for the morning and retest and, and add spa plus again if needed? I don't think you'll need any spa plus. I think you probably just need to burn off some of that chlorine and get in the water. That's it, that one's easy. Um, I'm, I'm assuming Scott has a dual temp. So he said, how much do you put on the hot tub side? That water gets used less, but is always problematic. So, well, the, the different temperature ranges. So I would use, although it's a much smaller body of water, so they, you, need, you need more because it's hotter and less because it's smaller. So you really just need to feel it out. But if, it, if that side is getting wonky on you, then you need to, to use more, I, I'm assuming. As far as exactly how much, I've never uh, taken care of a, a dual temp full time only at events, so I don't really know off the top of my head how much of anything to put in. And again, it depends on bather load, so it's it's very difficult to answer that question with that information. But if the other side is good and that one is cloudy, and I'm assuming it's just cloudy, then you want to up that. And but you can still test strip it. There is an attachment in the filter, a pipe that for leveling purposes, so there is some mixing of that water. Um, but it's not going to mix, you know, wholeheartedly. Okay, so I would just watch that. But that's all you got to do is, if you if you think it's going to be more, 
or needs more, then, then just use more on that side. So it, it's, and you may get more use on the hot tub side in the winter time because of the obviously warmer temperature. Although my swim spot is 101. So someone asked, is the non-chlorine shock the oxidizer? Is the non-chlorine shock? The oxidizer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, it's, they be, uh, you know what? <clears throat> Whoever asked that, you are absolutely right. It's confusing because you've yeah. got non-chlorine shock, chlorine shock. So you should have dichlorochlorine and non-chlorine shock. You don't need chlorine shock because you already have chlorine. Okay, for sure. You, you can get non-chlorine shock. You can probably go to your dealer and either call them or look on their website. Yep, see what they like. And see what they have. Um, you can also go to uh, Master Spas Parts if your dealer doesn't have an online store and they should have the non-chlorine shock also. Um, we have the 19 deep not set up yet. Do we use half a bottle sequestering for hot tub plus a full bottle for the swim spa? I like that. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> we'll come here. Um, someone said that they had a pool and this is way much easier. I, we agree. <laughs> I have used the Ben method since the day I got it and have only had issues with cloudy water once, which I resolved in a matter of two days. Easy peasy to take care of. Awesome. Go Ben method. That was uh, Yeah, I get harassed about it Jay. from everyone yep. and I don't care. That's what I do. Can you add I, I wonder who came up with the name though. I still I don't, wonder who, I don't remember. Who, who coined it the phrase? It was definitely it wasn't someone me. on here. It wasn't me. It was someone watching or someone on the, the Master Spot Owners group and it's it stuck. I mean, even uh, we got stories yeah. about it. Yeah. Can you add calcium hardness after you have the other chemicals balanced? If yes, then rebalance the chemicals. I noticed my calcium needs to increase. I wonder what it is because there's a range I wonder how high so you, they do have calcium hardness increaser okay so they just need to adjust it with that so adjust it with that uh, hey buddy. Julie let's see when do you use spa plus I don't know what spa plus is that's a specific is that I'm assuming that's like it's spa up is that pH and alkalinity increase if it is, whenever it's low. I'm assuming that's what it is. I don't know, you know, there's lots of different brands out there. So it's... Yeah. Um, Kenny, we have never used the Power Breather Snorkel. We really like uh, the regular swim snorkel, the Finnis. Um, we, we just think that that one's awesome. And so we always stick with that one. And we don't have it here because Ben has it at his house. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the yellow one that goes right up and it goes right over yeah. your... Sticks um, up really tall. Yeah, I if it's if if you're talking about the one that goes over your mouth, we don't love that one. But if it if it's great for you, awesome. Um, thank you so much for your reply. We have a six two twilight. Do we set one filter at four hours and the others at four hours? I like to. I like to do them even, go go eight hours. Eight hours makes it easy. Yeah, four in the morning and four at night. If, and if that works, that's awesome, Christine. <laughs> Donna's saying she, he is really, really, really He's ridiculous. <laughs> and he's this, he's this chilled out like all the time. <laughs> During the winter, what is the lowest temp I can set my spa to to keep the chemicals correct? 80? Yeah, 80 is the 80 lowest is the that it'll yeah. go. Um, Everyone is saying that your puppy is adorable. He's ridiculous. Can you please explain the Ben method again, newbie here? Yes. He did talk about it earlier, but basically it's just putting in, in a, in a swim spa like this, about an ounce of chlorine at the end of every day that you use the swim spa. Right? Awesome. Rinse out your filters about once a month. If you're being good, we're not always that good, but Rinse out your filters once a month or so, and once a year drain and refill. So that Ben method is really just using that that little bit of chlorine at the end of the day that you use it. And if you're really behaving, put a little non-chlorine shock in there once a week, every other week. I don't, but I'd like to. I, I probably should. And, you want to um, test our water real quick? And yeah. See, um, let's see where I the Ben this, method got us. He's a uh, a German Shepherd. Yes, he is. His Gilliam. name is Captain. Captain Gilliam. You want to run right. around? Go yeah. Ahead. Go ahead, run around. All right, Ben's gonna bring you over to the All swim right. spot. Let's go. We're, we're running the. Uh... 
late. We're late. We're late. Oy. Okay. Mary, come hold the camera, please. Don't drop it in the water. Okay. All right, let's get this turned around. There we go. Beautifully clean and clear. I did look at it this morning. Okay. So, can you see that? Let's see where it is. <laughs> He's like, wait, where are you going? He's like, I can't get up there. Okay, I can tell you already, it's perfect. So we're three PPM on the chlorine. Can you see that match? Yep. Alkalinity, 80. We'll call that in the middle, maybe 80, 90. pH, I'm gonna call that perfect. That's in between 7.2 and 7.8. Calcium, that's calcium hardness. That's definitely lower than the 250. Oh, this has that at, at uh, 250 to 450 is ideal. Oh, that might, uh, I guess, I don't know. What do you guys think? It's pretty close. I think, I think it's good. Yeah. I guess it's close. Yeah. I didn't, have, and we never checked it. Um, Zandra asked, is that an ounce of chlorine for any size swim spa? I would say that would be good you know, for ga like a- Gallon wise, they're all pretty close. Yeah, about for, for a 12 foot to an 18 foot, and then the 19 foot dual temperature, you're gonna wanna put an ounce in the swim area and maybe like half an ounce that was half an ounce for the hot tub section. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, guys, uh, let's come back over together and we All will right. be back in two weeks on February 9th. And in the meantime, submit those photos to the contest page. And uh, we can't wait to see all of your photos. Oh, look at them. Oh, he's trying to get up. <laughs> all right, and maybe maybe we'll have an, a guest visitor on our next one. So we'll see you February 9th, and everyone have a great, great night. Be good. We'll be on there for questions. Yep. Thanks, Later, guys. everybody.